What if time travel is truly possible? Where would you go first? Today we're covering the black hole theory, the light speed theory, and more theories that prove it could really happen one day. So get your bucket list ready, tell me in the comments where and when you're going, and let's figure out together the best way to get you there. Alrighty, imagine a future in which humans have built advanced spacecrafts, capable of traveling at a significant percentage of the speed of light. So scientists have become aware of a large black hole in our galactic neighborhood that is now, well, within our reach. Yes. This is the black hole theory, everybody. So when a team of researchers assemble to travel to the black hole, one curious question might rise above all others. What would happen if we flew straight into it? For now, this hypothetical scenario is still a long ways away. But for as long as we have been aware of black holes, scientists have wondered what mysteries lie beyond the horizon. The edge of the black hole, representing the point of no return, or even light is unable to escape the bizarre object's gravitational pull. Conventional wisdom, namely Einstein's theory of general relativity, the best theory of gravity gravity in town, predicts the presence of a singularity at the center of a black hole. It's a point of infinite density that lies outside the bounds of our normal space-time. Any craft and people on board would likely undergo a process known as spaghettification. Whilst crossing over the event horizon of the black hole, matter would be stretched flat like a long piece of spaghetti, possibly even to the point where it is just a long string of atoms. It's extremely unlikely that a spaceship or a human would survive such an ordeal, and it's possible that the same thing would happen again on your way out, but in reverse. One prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity is that time will move slower the closer you are to an object of large mass. A strange consequence of this means that time moves slower if you are at sea level compared to on top of a mountain, as you are closer to Earth's massive core at sea level. Of course, in this example, the difference in the passing of time is kind of iffy. But if you were instead on a spacecraft orbiting a large black hole, then the time dilating effects would be significant. For future scientists interested in the time warping features of black holes, therefore their best bet will be to stay in a relatively close orbit of said area, taking advantage of its time dilating properties from the outside. However, this prediction of a singularity doesn't necessarily mean it exists. Singularities tend to pop up at the very boundaries of our understanding, like inside these holes and at the Big Bang, and at the intersection of general relativity and quantum mechanics. On one hand, theorists are working on a way to marry quantum mechanics with general relativity, and have suggested that something else might be going on at the center of these holes. Instead of forming a singularity, matter and energy may be sucked in and then spat out at some time in the distant future. Yep, you heard me, a time machine. Look, at the end of the day, black holes, in addition to wormholes, are one of the most used resources in time traveling novels. I'll get to wormholes in a minute. The Kerr black hole theory is a result of Roy Kerr's calculations for relativity, and this hole is a singularity that possesses mass and angular momentum, but does not possess an electrical charge. So this black hole spins around at a central axis and has two event horizons, which contain a ring formed singularity. Inside each of the two event horizons, time and space are reversed. So in this situation, the swapping occurs twice. It's both possible to escape the ring form singularity as well as end up in negative space as you cross it. Avoiding it would cause you to go back in time while you were crossing the first event. If it sounds confusing, don't worry, it is. Here's another popular one, the speed of light. The speed of light is often considered an ultimate speed limit according to relativity. However, recent research has explored the theoretical possibilities of exceeding this limit and the implications for time travel. One study delves into the mathematical proof of time travel by using Einstein's equations, suggesting that it is possible to predict the effects on a body if it travels beyond the speed of light. This research aims to extend the theory of relativity to encompass speeds greater than that of light, and discusses the extent of time dilation that would occur under such circumstances. So the first form of time travel that relates to light speed is when the matter is accelerated too close to light speed, causing time to slow down for it, you know, due to time dilation. Now this can only be used to travel to the future, not to the past. So while this first form of time travel is actually hard science and not science fiction, all it accomplishes is once again, you just go forth. So yes, the light speed theory does refer to a more broad definition, but hey, I still wanna go to the future. Marty McFly? All right, folks. When you think about time travel in modern media, you probably think of the wormhole method. Just wanted to wait to get to it. So at the end of the day, the sci-fi landscape is littered with wormholes. We're talking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Rick and Morty, heck the MCU. All these theoretical constructs allow characters to zip between distant points in the universe as easy as stepping through a doorway. A wormhole is a special solution to the equations describing Einstein's theory of general relativity that connects two distant points in space time via a tunnel. Now ideally the length of this tunnel is shorter than the distance between those two points, making the wormhole kind of a shortcut. Though they are a staple of sci-fi and have captured the popular imagination, wormholes are, as far as we know, kind of hypothetical. But 
they also have the somewhat mystical ability to allow backwards time travel. So if you take one end of the wormhole and accelerate it to a speed close to that of light, it will experience that time dilation that I've been talking about today. So the internal clock will run slower than the rest of the universe. So that will cause the two ends of the wormhole to no longer be synchronized in time. Then you could walk in one end and end up in your own past. Voila! Time travel! Yes, they are the legitimate solutions to general relativity, but scientists have never figured out a way to maintain a stable wormhole in the real universe. To do so, you would need exotic matter, matter with negative mass that can repel gravity, thus negating the super gravity of the wormhole that would otherwise collapse the wormhole as soon as it opened. The exotic matter in itself is also another, you know, it's just a whole other theory of time travel. Once again, could happen. The cosmic string theory for time travel was developed by the physicist J. Richard Gott and was explained in the 2002 book How to Build a Time Machine by Paul Davies. So as described in all these books, a cosmic string is a string shaped crack that has an extreme mass. Now cosmic strings are kind of a texture for the universe. They're kind of like defects that may have occurred about a couple of seconds after the big bang when the universe went through that big phase transition. So this phase transition is similar to the one exhibited by water as it changes from a solid to a liquid, to a gas. In the case of the universe, the phase transition would have occurred in the fluid-like quantum fields that inhabit all of space. The particles we're familiar with, photons, gluons, quarks, electrons, all come from ripples in the quantum fields, which in turn make the seas, the cosmos, and every human here on Earth. If the universe cooled too quickly, space-time would have cracked into hairline fractures, just like sharp white veins often seen in blocks of ice. This would happen because the fields wouldn't always be aligned with one another, and the resulting cracks are cosmic strings. So you can think of the cracks as something like the width of an elementary particle, and at least the length of a galaxy. Because of their extreme mass, cosmic strings have the property of space-time distortion. So once you travel near the cosmic string, you experience a full rotation around the string in less than 360 degrees. In short, you can do something resembling a warp known as a space-time angular deficit. So when you pass through an area of angular deficit, transit time becomes zero. Applying this, once the cosmic string moves approaching light speed, according to the theory of relativity, time will flow slower for the cosmic string in relation to its surroundings. Therefore, passing through the area of the angular deficit would cause the zero transit time to become negative. In other words, it will be the past after transit. So if you use two cosmic strings, you can do a space deficit jump. If you can revolve back to your original location, you can return to the same time you started revolving. And that, roughly speaking, is time travel by means of cosmic string. And finally for today, elementary particle ring and laser theory is a time travel theory developed by Professor Ronald Mallet of the University of Connecticut. Now, something you need to know about Ronald is that this man loves the concept of time travel. He has since he was like, super duper young. And at around 77, the former professor still wasn't backing down from his theory. He's like, a spinning laser loop can bend time in an ongoing way. Now, this involves the use of a ring laser to generate a closed time-like curve, or CTC for short. Now, this is based on an older time travel theory called the Tipler Cylinder, except modified to be more practical, seeing as Tipler Cylinders would have to be infinitely long. So Ronald came up with a better way to generate CTCs using only a ring laser. The circulating light beams of a ring laser can theoretically twist space-time and allow the dimension of time to be traversable, just like the dimension of space is, well, normally traversable. Then one could theoretically walk through time in any direction, as one can do up in space. So this works by producing gamma rays or magnetic fields to warp time into those CTCs. So theoretically, this could be used for physical time travel for human beings. Now the prototype, which has actually been running since like 2019, can create a continuous rotating beam of light. Now according to our expert, he says the light can create gravity. And if gravity can affect time, then light itself can affect time. How cool is that? And that's it for me once again, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly. See y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.